Greetings from Tbilisi, Georgia. This is Byrne giving you an update on the progress and the roadblocks on my project to get my container from Haynes, Alaska to Tbilisi, Georgia, which is this... Sometimes I wonder why I started this process. Um, many of you might be wondering, well, Byrne, why, why isn't your container on its way? Didn't it already come? When's it coming? Uh, and all I can say is you may not have watched the whole video that I made to go with this. And that is to say there were two parts of the process. Part number one was to get a permanent place to live. And uh, fortunately, houses here are pretty cheap by American standards. Uh, I did actually find a place that was about, uh, we'll say, under $60,000. And it would meet my needs very well. Well, here's the problem with that. So, <laughs> trying to find a place here, uh, I started the process. I kind of wrapped up my original uh, campaign fundraiser at the end of June. So, I started looking in July. However, I couldn't start looking in July because I realized I had to have a certain amount of money in a Georgian bank in order to do that. And that was not a simple process. It took me essentially all the month of August to round the bases to get money in Georgia. I won't go into all the details, which are bizarre, but let's just say this. My bank in Alaska is really protective and doesn't like banks in Georgia. So I had to pull it all out of an ATM machine to get it here. And I had to get special dispensation to pull out larger amounts and then turn around and put it into my account here, which caused me to lose an awful lot of money. Maybe, I don't know, a couple of hundred dollars in transaction fees, particularly by the Georgians. Finally, I get what I consider to be, to be the money I need for like a 10% uh, deposit on my loan here. I'm not worried about money coming in to pay the loan. It'll be fine. There is one thing that starts to worry me, and that is the amount of interest here, which it turns out is of over 12%, which if you're an American, you're going, how can you play spend 12% on a bank loan? Exactly. Uh, well, the, the thing is, it's just like, well, that's 12% on, you know, uh, somewhere between $40,000 and $60,000. It's not that bad when you consider how much home prices are in America. But then the next problem came with trying to actually find a place to, uh, uh, to live here. So I look up in Georgian sites. I'll put a little bit of this on the screen for you here. I look up on Georgian sites... Uh, homes that I would like to visit. Now, there's one huge problem. I can't speak enough Georgian to communicate on the phone or go over to the house uh, or a flat to negotiate or to look around. So what I do have to do is rely on all of my Georgian friends. Now, the problem with that is it's August and it's a bit like France in that so many of my friends are leaving the country. They're busy. They're, it's just a bad time to deal with this stuff. And it isn't until mid-September. I only saw one house in all of August through to the mid-September. Which means, well, what that meant is there was no way I could get back to Alaska in time for, say, the end of November at that rate. So what that really means is that I'm losing another year's uh, storage money on my facility because I there's no way I can get... There's the Alaskan winter. Starting at November, all bets are off for the weather, so I'm not going to go back to Alaska and try to bring my stuff here if I get a place. So I have to wait until at least March or April to go and stuff a container. Okay, so there's that, plus having to spend more money on rent than I need to. 
And then what happens is there is, a, so eventually I start looking at more places. My dear friend Sophia helps me and I'm looking and I find a place that I like, but I look at a few more places just in case. But I decide, okay, this is the place. Now, the way it works in Georgia is strange for me. Uh, I mean, it's normal for them, but I have to go to the bank, get permission for a loan, then go back to the people and tell them I want the place. It's a weird dance. So I go to the bank yesterday, finally. If you look at the date, it's, you know, October 7th. I go to the bank and I ask them, can I get a loan? And they say, yeah, they look at how much uh, my social security pulls in, other things, and they go, yeah. But they don't want a 10% uh, of the final uh, price down. They want 30%. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm just like I'm I'm not even depressed. I'm not just shell shocked. It's like because I need at least another ten thousand dollars, and I'm just I just sit there and go like, okay, this is like some weird folk tale where you open a door and then there's some other challenge you have to face before you can get to the next point. And 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 meanwhile, <laughs> you know, I've got a certain amount of money. Oh, how grateful I am for all of the uh, gifts I was given. But now I just don't feel I can ask for any more. Because it's like I'm not going to start another fundraiser or continue. This one's still active, I found out last week when someone donated $20. But I, I said to myself, no, I just can't do it. I do remember, however, there was a friend who I didn't ask, but he just said, Hey, Bern, if you want to borrow $10,000... I'll loan it to you without any interest, which would be much better than getting it from the bank in Georgia. But that still is, is money I'm going to have to pay back. And here's the problem with finding him. He's working, researching desert tortoises in the Mojave Desert. And he's nowhere near uh, a phone <laughs> or, or a motel room or anything. He only comes in every like three weeks or so. So it means I'm going to send him an email and I'm going to wait. And then what it's going to happen is I have to go through the dance with my bank again to get the money here, which requires getting a dispensation. For, you know, it's just going to be, I see a month and a half a month, a month and a half at least before I can have the amount of money I need in my bank here. So I, you know, and that's, you know, if it can happen, I mean, can he transfer his money from nowhere, uh, Mojave desert to, cause he can't go up to a Hanes if he's working. Can he, does he have the same bank as I do? Can he transfer it? Uh, these are all questions that are up in the air. And and then, well, anyway, as you can see, it's, I'm just kind of like, and, I, you know, I'm just hoping this can happen. Meanwhile, it's like I've just hit a massive roadblock. I just want to tell you that in case you want to know where I am with this. And I don't know the answer to these questions. And if the, it, I mean, he, I'm sure, would like to, still help me out. Whether he can or not um, in any time in the near future, you know, I'll probably lose the house I'm looking at now or the flat. It's like a double, it's really cool. It's in a nice part of town. It's uh, kind of a double flat. The top one is, it's over a hundred meters, hundred yards, square yards. It would fit my needs perfectly, but will, will I uh, be able to keep it? I can't say. I just can't say. So, um, I, I'm just saying this to tell you where I am. I'm not saying start giving more money, although if you throw something in, I'm certainly going to help. But the point is, I'm not, I'm just giving you this as an update. I'm not, again, I'm not going to start doing the uh, campaign over again. That just takes out more than I, I, you know, to sit there and beg for money. It's, it's not a fun thing to do. But I do appreciate everything you've done. Truthfully, had I not 
receive the money from all of you that I did, at this point, it would simply be hopeless and I'd be looking for, you know, okay, is there a permanent place I can rent? <laughs> some place where I can say I'm not going to get kicked out of this place at some point in the future. But I really don't want, I really feel I need a permanent place here. And, and you know, will it be another year or so before I can bring my stuff here? I don't know. I, you know, it's just like it's all been thrown up in the air now. And I would ask for your support, prayers, friendship, whatever. And uh, I appreciate everything you've done. And I hope uh, this clarifies where I am at with my Herculean struggle. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you know, I'm not depressed about it. I'm just simply like, okay, new challenge. Let's deal with it. And I think that's how, how you have to be in life. You can't suddenly go like, oh, no, it's not going to work. You just have to face the thing. And, hey, if I get there, I get there. If I don't, I don't. You know, my, my secondary plan is if I can never move my stuff, you know, maybe I have to think about another place to live. I don't know. Uh, I can't really imagine it. But, you know, everything's on the table. So it's for me, it's like, you know, if I'm supposed to be here, I'm supposed to be here. If I'm not, I'm not. I'm, you know, and in my mind I am, but hey, this is a nice roadblock. Okay, I'm done. <laughs>